Metaphor is a counter-logical use of language. It's, it's a statement that makes sense, no sense whatsoever on the literal level, but makes all the sense in the world on a higher level. And when you see that something makes sense, but makes no sense on the literal, literal level, you know that you're dealing with a metaphor. Now, what I, try to, what I try to do when I'm starting out English 219 is to convince students that this has nothing to do. I hate the notion of symbolic meaning as it's used in literature courses, where it means anything can stand for anything else, and everybody nods. Um, and the people who are used to thinking up very weird associations generally wind up feeling that they've done the best job of, the best job of interpreting it. I heard a story just, just this week, I heard a story this class will remember that we went through um, to his coy mistress a few assignments ago, and in there the speaker says that if they had time enough, he says to the lady, if they had time enough, um, there would be no objection to his resisting her, his amorous advances. And he says, among other things, our vegetable love should grow vaster than empires and more slow. And I heard about a class elsewhere in which that was being taught and the teacher asked what vegetable love meant and somebody said it obviously means an erection. And the teacher said I beg your pardon. And the guy said well it's vegetable and a zucchini is a vegetable so you can kind of see it as a giant erection and that is symbolic now, of course, it doesn't mean that, and that kind of free association, which passes for interpretation in some literary classes, is entirely irresponsible, but you've got the duty, we assume the duty in English 219 of saying why it's irresponsible to do that kind of jumping around, something reminds you of something else. And what I usually say on the first day of English 219 is this, we use metaphors all the time, we use them every day in speech. Um, you turn in a newscast on your television set and you hear the newscaster say, the White House announced today that the United States is going to, and so on and so forth. You've got a metaphor in your hands and you don't even think about it. You just automatically understand what the speaker is saying. But it is a metaphor. The White House is a building. You know that in literal terms, buildings can't talk. You don't even pause to consider the literal meaning of what the speaker is saying. What you understand is that the White House here stands for uh, a small group of policy men with enormous policy making powers in the United States government. And bingo, you've, you've heard a metaphor and understood a metaphor. A metaphor says that X, in this case a building, is something else Y, which in this case means a small number of people with immense policy power, making powers in the, in the government. Uh, the standard thing in the literary, the standard example of, me of metaphor in the literary handbooks used to be Spencer's wonderful line, she is the rose, the glory of the day. Ta um, a guy talking about a beautiful woman, she is the rose, the glory of the day. Now, here he said that one thing, X, a, f a flower, is another thing, a woman, a human woman. And we know what it means. We know what he means, he means, but this is where interpretation and responsible interpretation enters the picture. We know, for instance, that certain things about roses are identical, are, are absolutely essential to what the speaker is saying about this, this beautiful woman. The fragility of the rose, the beauty of the rose, the fragrance of the rose, the freshness of the rose, all those are appropriate. We know that other things about roses, that they need frequent fertilizing, that they can be eaten by Japanese beetles, that they have to be watered regularly, and so on and so forth, are completely, completely irrelevant to what the speaker is trying to say. Interpretation, when you meet a metaphor, interpretation is, is, is a process of throwing out all the stuff that's irrelevant and seeing what is exactly relevant and you get the meaning of the metaphor. The meaning of the metaphor is this, that at the time the speaker uses a metaphor, the resemblances between the X and the Y have become so overwhelming that the speaker has stopped seeing the differences. And thus you see how the speaker sees the world. In this case, a single woman, but you also know certain more global facts, such as the speaker is in love with this woman, the speaker is enamored of this woman, the speaker would like to glorify this woman.